Before this video starts, I just want to say that majority of the video may seem normal at first, but the one thing that you guys might see is that I've already obtained his 3C. Now, now, hold up. Before you guys ask me, hey Zeb, what you gotta do is like that, man. Well, let me explain this situation to y'all. I've already recorded this video once already, and pretty much I had to record it again. And this was because the thing that I record all of this is on OBS Studios and it did not pick up my audio at all which frustrates me because there are times where I do and don't test it to make sure everything is good to go and for some reason it likes to change my audio settings sometimes. This is like the third or fourth time OBS Studios. This needs to stop. Fix your dang app. But yeah, I don't know why it does that or what causes it to change some of the settings. But don't worry though. You'll still see me go through Kuruboro's first awakening stage because I know that it might trouble some people out there. And I just wanted to say all that out there just so I don't confuse nobody. So sorry about all that and the long explanation. But yeah, let's get right into the video. Not gonna lie, it feels weird seeing Kuruboro now as an SR character because I know there are some other games like Grand Summoners that also did a collaboration with these crossover characters and Kuruboro is actually one of the highest rarity characters that you have to get lucky enough to pull for. And he is fairly decent for certain content, I'll say. If you didn't know already, which I'm hoping you do by now, you're able to get this character for free by farming the event that's going on right now until Thursday, July 21st, but I know some of you guys have different times zone so it might be different for some of y'all. So what are you waiting for? Go get him before he's gone. He's literally free! Kuribara is a physical tank who is capable of being an attacker as well and is able to self heal on top of that. His talent loves justice after taking action if there is a female ally or a character named Yusuke Urameshi. Physical damage is reduced by 30% for one turn and after battle if HP is less than 40% he recovers 30% of his own HP. This talent is good on its own ways. I say that because to get the physical damage reduced by 30% which is going to help quite a bit. It practically makes you want to use certain characters with Kurobara. But I'll say that it's kind of fair since you're going to be really using female characters quite a bit. And trust me, you will. Because you're going to want to run healers like Tiaris, Liana, and all stuff like that. And plus the self heal is really great as well. For his mastery stones, for his armor you can do HP attack, defense, headwear. HP attack, defense, weapon, and accessory HP attack and skill. Or if you're gonna go for a more defensive Kurobara, you can do instead of like attack and skill, you can run like defense and magic defense if you wanna. But Kurobara is a fairly good attacker. Like his attack value is quite up there, so so I don't see why you wanna run like defense and magic defense for the weapon. I'll say for that part. For his soldier's horses. There aren't that many great soldiers that he can use except for like some of the offensive ones like Mass Maid and Heavy Infantry. The only defensive ones that are really good for Kurubara is going to be the Guardian Infantry and the Heavy Centurion since they do increase their defense. But I just wish that he had Phalanx at least. Like if he had Phalanx, I think that would have made Kurubara really really good. And for his weapon, you can put on Throne Guardian just because he is a tank after all, so having HP is pretty good on him. Another weapon that you can put on him is the Dragon Slayer's Grand, which gives him plus 8 HP and plus 8 attack in total. But if not, then you can run Seal Guardian with him. That is also another option that you can put on for him. And then for his armor, you can run Bloodline Armor or heck, maybe even Aeolus since Kuribara is going to take more damage from magic attack since his magic defense is going to be much slower than his defense. Or you can even slap on mirror armor because mirror armor is going to be really great for Kurubar since his defense is pretty good. And then for his helmet, you don't really need anything too crazy. You can just run some of the basics ones like Aeneas helmet. This is a more common helmet that you'll most likely get as an SSR. Or you can even run carbon fiber helmet. That should give him plus 8% in his defense and magic defense as long as his HP is over 50%. Or if you want to go crazy with him, you can even run Fury of Tar if you're planning to go crazy on his builds. And then for his accessory, it really just depends on what class that you have for him. So if you have him in his Lancer class, you want the more defensive accessory. Like you can run Elven Bell, which does increase his attack and defense by 8% when he is attacked. Or you can even do Prisoner's Gears, because although it just gives him plus 8% increase to his attack, what this does is that when battling against cavalry, his attack is increased by an additional 
12%. Or if you want some other options, you could maybe even run Holy Arc, which does increase its HP. Or if you're really feeling like it, you can do Giant Belt and King's Amulet since that will increase his defense and magic defense. And if you're going for a more offensive cure bar, then honestly, I would say any attack percent increase accessory will be good enough for him. And then for his a chance, for a defensive cure bar, I would most likely recommend Steel for him. But if you're going offensive for him, you can do like Breeze or Rough Sea or Full Moon as well. And as for what kind of a chance that you want for him, you want attack obviously and HP. And then for the third option, I would say try to get a little bit of defense and magic defense for him. Just so that he isn't dying too fast. Alright, so now that we got those out of the way, let's go into his first awakening stage. Alright guys, so sorry if I sound a little offhand here, but you're going to be facing off Hiei first, then Kurama, then lastly Toguro. For the soldiers, even though Toguro is a cavalry unit that is capable of high damage, you don't gotta worry about him because he has this transformation skill where if it ends, he loses 90% of his HP. So he should be easily killable even if you're using infantry. So don't be afraid to use mask made or heavy infantry if they're your best soldiers. I totally forgot about that part so you'll see me use something else instead. When you first face off against Hiei, he might be trouble for some of you guys since he can apply healing reversal and that will pretty much mess you up since Kurobara can heal himself. But what you can do is that if you can't really one shot him or something like that, is that you can go to the defensive tiles like I did here and this should hopefully help you guys survive his attacks. And if you're tanky enough, you can pretty much wait out his transformation skill since it will stun him when it ends. So yeah, once you deal with Hiei, Kurama will be next and he shouldn't really be much of a threat unless your HP is just ridiculously low. And Kurama will do some fixed damage to you if you go too close to him. He'll start off with a transformation skill and you can easily wait it out until it's gone since he is capable of doing quite a bit of damage just from his fixed damage alone. Once it's over, he doesn't really lose a lot besides making him unable to attack back at you if you attack him. So you can use this opportunity to strike. Or if you're really tanky enough, you can just go balls in. Now lastly, Toguro. Like I said before, he's really easy to handle if you just wait out his skill to end, which makes him lose 90% of his HP. And when that happens, you can just go ahead and finish him off since there's literally no way for him to heal from that. Then boom, there we go. First awakening stage is done. For his second awakening stage, it's not going to be that hard at all. But I'll give you guys some tips. You can pretty much use Kurama first to deal AoE damage to hurt the enemies, then have Hiei do his and have him take out the enemy Kurama since he's going to be really really annoying. But what you can also do with Hiei is have him use that one skill. I think it's called Fist of the Immortal Flames. And what that does is that as long as he crits, he can apply healing reversal. And you can use that on Kurubara. Kurubara is going to be annoying with that healing skill of his. And with Toguro, he shouldn't really be that bad at first if he can tank his attack, one of his attacks at least for one turn. And then his skill will end it, causing him to lose a lot of his HP. But I feel like once you take out Kurama, then everything else should be pretty easy. Alright, so now that's settled, let's go test out his 3C. Alright, so here we are in the training ground stage and this video is gonna be a short one. Because his 3C is really short and simple to understand. What it does is that it's an activation skill that has a cooldown of 3 turns. He gains Spirit Sword Frenzy and Spirit Reach for 2 turns. It cannot be dispelled and ignores immunity. What Spirit Sword Frenzy does is that damage though increases by 20% and when launching a normal melee attack, the hero can attack 2 times. And with Spirit Reach, his attack range is increased by 1. So yeah, just by reading this, I'm pretty sure you guys can already understand. Once again, this is an activation skill so let's see how it looks like. Alright, alright, not bad. But the one thing about his 3C, the way how it works is pretty interesting, so... So that's him attacking from 2 range. But he did not double attack right there, however. The way how he double attacks is interesting. Let me show it to you guys real quick. It's only when he's attacking within one block is where he gets that double attack. So let me show it to you guys again. Only when he's attacking from one block is when he's able to do a double attack. I feel like he should double attack no matter what. Like even if he's attacking from 2 range, he should still be able to double attack. And I know you guys are probably saying to me like, oh you're just not reading it right. No, I am, I am reading it. But I think he should be able to double attack even when he's attacking from 2 blocks. 
because you're doing a normal attack and normally normal attacks don't do a whole lot. But the one thing that I find really cool about this 3C is that he's able to double attack when he's being targeted from a melee attack at least. So yeah, that part I think is really cool. But I still believe that he should be able to double attack no matter what. So yeah, that was Kurubara's 3C. And I know I didn't really show it off a whole lot, but that's just because but that's just because there's not a lot to really go over it. But I think I really pretty much cleared it all up. Him as a tank, there are definitely more options that you can choose out there. Like one being Vargas. Vargas is an amazing tank, especially for people who are starting off. Vargas is able to have a high damage value, has great defense, and is able to revive. And on the plus side, he can even attack as well. So yeah, I feel like Vargas is going to be hitting much harder than Kurobara. Because the way how Vargas works is that his attack value is based off of his defense whenever he uses his guard skill or use power stab. And then you have Freya. Freya is an amazing tank as well. She is both a physical and magic tank who is able to do some fixed damage as well. So if the enemy tries to attack her, she can deal fixed damage to the enemy causing them to do less damage than they should be. And that's part of the reason why I like Freya too. Because not only is she a great tank, she's also making the enemy do less damage as well by damaging them before she gets attacked. Even though her attack value is not the best in the world, her fixed damage is where it comes to play, really. And I know Kurobara does have a revive skill, but that only comes from his guard skill. Whereas compared to Vargas, it's coming from his talent. But that's not me necessarily saying Kurobara is bad also. Because I think all characters are good in their own way. They're just built differently. But keep in mind that Kurobara is a physical tank. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And feel free to let me know down in the comments how you guys feel about Kurobara. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching, your fellow.